learn lessons from the past. Let's uh, thank Jason Sloss uh, for his report there and go ahead and uh, now we'll turn our attention uh, back to Carlsbad where our Christian De La Rosa is standing by with some homeowners. Uh, the devastation from yesterday is um, obviously evident from behind you. We also just got word um, that there was a fatality uh, involved in this fire. Uh, Christian, what's the latest there? I know you're going to be talking to some homeowners out there. Right, well, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of good news within the devastation. Go ahead and take a look. This is one of 22 homes that was just destroyed uh, by this fire from yesterday. And so it's been a story about counting the damages, but also counting the blessings. Speaking about damages, about, I have a, a Susa here. Um, he is one of the residents, um, lives here. You know, you were telling me a little bit earlier about, gosh, everything that was inside you had two vehicles and a piano that was a hundred years old yeah and some very old painting uh, a lot of stuff from austria his family was from there just a lot of collectibles uh irreplaceable stuff when you say his family you say uh, the other gentleman that also lives here talk to me about how was it yesterday um i understand that you guys came out saw the smoke and in a moment's notice had to leave as your home was up in flames no, that's where the story changes because we were walking some furniture up from somebody moving and I saw a little bit of smoke over past El Camino Real and I said, let's start watering, Greg. So he did, I did, I pertained on the garage down there. I saved the garage and the whole county couldn't save this house. I saved the garage with a garden hose. And there were six different fire crews here, put this house out six different times. And the fire just came back. It just kept coming back. Every time it crashed in, it would flame up. Wow. And they didn't drop a thing on these eucalyptus trees, which would have saved the house. Mm. And they were here, but they were hitting the front lines. And I thought, if this house burns, this whole street's probably going to burn. So they backed up, and they stopped it right here. And you were surrounded by these flames, because th this home, guys, we're at the tip of the cul-de-sac here on Skimmer Court. Um, so your home was, was pretty much in the front lines, and, uh, surrounded by this fire. Well, actually, I believe I was part of it. Yeah? I did. So you guys were under the impression that this may have been arson? Yes. So talk to me about just today. I know that I, we spoke with Greg earlier, the other gentleman uh, that lives with you here, um, and he said that reality hasn't hit him yet. How are you, hand, how are you handling this? Uh, I'm handling this okay because the last five years under Obama, has been worse than this. Okay. Uh, what's what's next for you? Uh, are you are you guys, you know, you guys have kind of like a granny flat where you guys are living? The garage I saved. The garage in the back. The, the mythology in saving it was so that we had somewhere to stay. Okay. And, and guys, um, back out here live, of course, these type of situations, this is a, seems to bring out the best in people. We have Natalie Webb. If you can step in. She showed up with her family. You actually came in from Oceanside because the ash 